Fasting has been a very pivotal part on my weight loss journey, including various methods of fasting from intermittent fasting to prolonged fasting and even one dry fast. I was able to make this weight loss transformation. And I believe why fasting has been so beneficial for me is because of the metabolic damage I incurred through the processed foods I ate. Fasting is a very powerful tool, and if you are one of the lucky few people that can use fasting, welcome to the club, because not everyone's able to do it. And today, I want to talk about why fasting makes weight loss easier and dieting easier. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Deal Joy, and I made this weight loss transformation with a combination of low-carb, keto, and throwing in a fasting protocol known as one meal a day. It just means fasting for 20 hours a day and eating within a four hour eating window. I just compress all of my calories into that small eating window. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about the benefits of why that worked, but we'll just touch on it very quickly. So the reason why, when you condense your calories in a smaller eating window, you allow your body to switch into a method of fat burning. You allow for fatty acid oxidation to happen. So essentially you put your body in a state where it's burning fat all the time. And for anyone who struggles with obesity or being overweight, this is a key tool. Now you can do this in other ways, but I find fasting is more effective, especially for people who are metabolically damaged because of the following points I'm gonna state in the video. So let's jump into it right now. Number one, fasting crushes hunger. Any diet that helps to crush your hunger is a win because hunger is a problem. Why do you think they invented Ozempic, right? Ozempic basically crushes your hunger or these other GLP-1 little drugs. And that is in existence because of the crap food we've been eating. But anyway, you can do this naturally. Fasting crushes your hunger by producing ketones. When ketones are produced, the liver starts producing ketones around eight to 10 hours after your last meal or sip of sugary drink or what have you, or caloric dense drink. And in around 15 hours-ish, those ketones begin to enter the bloodstream. When those ketones enter the bloodstream, it goes to one place, to the brain, and it goes into the hypothalamus of the brain to crush hunger hormones. Not only that, fasting helps to regulate hormones such as leptin and ghrelin. People who struggle with obesity are leptin insensitive, so they are not sensitive to leptin, and they've noticed that. So basically, leptin is produced by the fat cells and it's a help to it helps auto regulate our weight but in people who are obese or struggle with metabolic damage leptin isn't working properly and they have all the leptin in their system but their body isn't responding to this so fasting to, can help regulate both hormones of leptin and ghrelin and crushes your hunger via ketones. Number two, it shifts your gut microbiome. The gut microbiome is so important when it comes to overall health. We're learning it is involved in glucose regulation. We are learning it is involved in several other hormonal aspects of the human body. So when it comes to shifting your gut microbiome, what fasting does, it basically starts off the bad gut microbiome. And the reason why our gut microbiome is destroyed is because of, again, eating unnatural foods, eating processed foods really destroys our gut microbiome in that it, it destroys the ability for the gut microbiome to be diverse. So that's what's going on. And when you fast, you starve off all the bad gut bacteria, which is the gut bacteria that's probably gonna be more depending on foods that are more processed. So it starves those foods, those gut microbiome out, allowing for the healthy ones to flourish. And to keep your gut microbiome diverse, this comes with diet. This is why I'm a big proponent of dieting. It's not just about fasting. You gotta learn how to properly diet as well. Um, some people may disagree. Some people may wanna do long fasts and eat junk food. I'm not about that. I'm about learning healthy eating habits because again, you wanna be able to be flexible with your fasting approach in the future. You don't wanna be stuck with fasting forever. It's about variation. You want variation. And if you have the ability to use fasting as a tool, you need to have the ability Ability to learn how to variate your variate. I don't know if that's a word, but to vary your fast. So the manipulation of foods is ruining our gut microbiome. So things like raw 
raw dairy is very good for you because it helps to promote the gut microbiome and it is a probiotic. So it's important to have a diverse gut microbiome, especially when it comes to weight loss. And fasting helps to get you at a good baseline. It destroys all the bad ones, but it's up to you to eat all the good foods to restore all of the healthy good ones. Next, fasting teaches you discipline and delayed gratification. This is key for anyone who struggles with binge eating, anyone who struggles with overeating. And it does this by helping you set a regular eating schedule. Now you can do this with eating, but for anyone who struggles with overeating or who feels like they're out of control with their food, fasting will help mitigate that with the metabolic effects that I will touch on in this video with crushing your insulin levels, bringing your glucose levels down, helping to regulate your mitochondria because the mitochondria is indicative of everything when it comes to energy and metabolism with the human body. So it teaches you delayed gratification. So when you go back to a regular looking diet where you're eating three meals a day, like I have been doing this past week while I'm at work, I find it at work, it's easier to eat throughout the day because Usually I don't have time to eat. Whereas when I'm at home, like today on the weekend, I'm gonna do an OMAD fast. So it teaches me delayed gratification because I'm learning to be hungry. And being hungry is beneficial. People are like, oh, you should eat if you're hungry right away, blah, blah, blah. Hunger has good effects because when you're hungry, you reduce your, your inflammation levels, you are in a state of fat burning, and it's gonna help you get healthier. Now I'm not saying, be yourself in a situation where you're in prolonged hunger, but hunger throughout the day here and there, there is not a good thing. It's a good sign. Learn to be hungry and fasting teaches you to learn how to be hungry. And eventually you won't be so sensitive to hunger and your hormones will line up. Fasting helps to fix metabolic damage. You can't lose weight in a calorie deficit when you're metabolically damaged. Like you can, but when I say you can't, it makes it very difficult to be in a calorie deficit when you eat like a meal in the beginning of the day, then you're super hungry an hour later. When you're hungry like that after eating a meal, your hormones are messed up. This is why it is important to fix yourself metabolically. And you can do this naturally through methods of fasting. It's gonna take time. Don't go from zero to 100. If you're starting your fasting journey, start off with fasting around 15 hours per day. Maybe have your last meal at seven o'clock p.m. and then skip breakfast the next day. It doesn't matter how you set up your fasting schedule as long as you're having that period where you are not eating. So you're, it allows your body to metabolically repair, go into a state of autophagy. That's where it's gonna repair all of the metabolic damage from um, fixing the mitochondria and you are in a state of metabolic damage your mitochondria is in a state of stress and it's in a state of stress due to the processed foods we've been eating mainly processed carbohydrates because processed carbohydrates spike our blood sugar levels really high and that constant spike in blood sugar up and down and up and down is what stresses out the mitochondria and it what damages it and fasting helps to keep this at a neutral level because when you fast you bring your insulin levels down because your glucose levels are down and burning fat happens in two steps it happens with lipolysis followed by fatty acid oxidation and lipolysis is the process that's going to be triggered by fasting and so will fatty acid oxidation which is basically where you cleave the fat molecule and you get one glycerol followed by one three fatty acids and then those fatty acids leave the cell enter the bloodstream looking to be oxidized and fatty acid oxidation is the process of using that fat as fuel so you want to put your state self in a state of constant fat burning the key to weight loss is not killing it at the gym it is being able to lose weight while doing nothing and that all depends on your metabolic state where are you right now for me I'm definitely in fatty acid oxidation because A, I did a nice sauna session yesterday with ice bath and B, I'm fasting. So my body has no choice but to go to the fat stores. So I'm burning fat at rest. That is the key to weight loss and fasting helps to achieve that. This leads me to my next point. Fasting increases fatty acid oxidation, which makes you more insulin sensitive, which allows you to be in a state of fat loss. So I love fasting and I love including it on my journey in the appropriate times. I do believe in 
over fasting. You don't need to over fast. You can lose weight with eating throughout the day if you're eating properly in a way that you're ensuring that you are in a state of fat burning. For someone who's exercising and building muscle, for example, have your carbs in and around your workouts, um, space out your meal, allow yourself to get a little hungry and stay active, you're able to lose weight that way as well. But for anyone who's morbidly obese or who's been struggling with stubborn weight, fasting can be a tool. Intermittent fasting, OMAD was my favorite form of fasting. I really liked that. I really enjoyed that. And I think it's a very powerful way to learn discipline. But please remember, you need to learn how to lose weight without fasting and lose weight with fasting. It's all about tools. You can't just have one tool in the shed. Life will hit you with things. So you need to be able to be flexible in your metabolic approaches to weight loss. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the fi this video. If you did, just type in the word fatty acid oxidation. That's three words. And I'm sending you guys my blog. Take care. Bye.